Welcome to the One Source Medicine MCAT question of the day. Today we've got a kinematics problem in which a car travels at an average velocity of 50 kilometers per hour northward over the first 30 minutes of a 40 kilometer journey north. If the trip takes exactly one hour, which of the following graphs could not apply to this scenario? So anytime you answer an MCAT question, you first want to make a really solid prediction prior to investigating the answer choices simply because that allows you to have a bias in the right direction toward what would be a correct answer prior to reading the answer choices which are chosen by MCAT test makers intentionally to trip you up. However, some questions like this one will package a lot of the essential information you would need in order to make a specific prediction within the answer choices themselves. So in these sorts of scenarios, we really need to start off by assessing each of our answer choices, noticing places where they're similar and ways in which they differ. That way we can come back to the question to make a more solid or specific prediction prior to determining which of the answer choices is the most correct. So let's go ahead and check out these answer choices to see what we're working with. If we zoom in on answer choice A, we can see that it gives us a graph with displacement on the y-axis and time on the x-axis, and then it's highlighted the first half hour of our journey, which was specifically referenced in the question in red with the last part of the journey in blue. So we're gonna to wanna to focus specifically on the red part of each of these graphs. If we scroll on down to answer choice B, we can see that we have a really similar scenario here, except for the fact that we've changed the units and the sort of quantity that we're referencing on our y-axis. Whereas answer choice A showed displacement, here in answer choice B, we have velocity in kilometers per hour on our y-axis, and we're still examining that over time on our x-axis, and time again is in minutes on the x-axis. So it seems like that's probably going to be consistent throughout our answer choices, whereas we're going to have some variation in our y-axis here. So that's just something to definitely pay attention to. And in fact, if we want to go and compare these two, we can see that during the first half hour of our trip in answer choice A, we travel a total of about what it looks like 25 kilometers at what would be a constant velocity. We can tell that's a constant velocity because the slope doesn't change throughout that time. So here we're going to travel 25 kilometers over a course of 30 minutes, which comes out to be an average velocity of 50 kilometers per hour. And that is consistent with what our question stem tells us. Therefore, we can go ahead and rule out answer choice A simply because it is consistent with the scenario provided in the question stem. When we look at answer choice B, we see a totally different graph. The line is, line is completely flat during the first 30 minutes. However, if we keep in mind that we're measuring velocity over time, then we can see that an then we can see that a flat graph doesn't mean that we're not moving, right? If the if the graph were flat in answer choice A, then we definitely wouldn't be moving at all, right? Because we're measuring displacement over time, so that would be akin to just standing still. But in answer choice B, a flat graph just means that we're moving at constant velocity, and since that is flat during the first 30 minutes of that trip, then we can just look at what exactly that velocity is over that time, and we see that it's 50 kilometers per hour. So this is probably the easiest one to go ahead and rule out simply because it just gives you the answer right there. So we know that it's not B, we know that's not A. So let's go ahead and move on to answer choices C and D. If we zoom in on answer choice C, we can see that we are once again looking at displacement over time. And just like in answer choice A, in fact, this is really identical in the first half of the trip here. So we can see that we're moving 25 kilometers total displacement over the course of half an hour. And once again, that tells us that we have an average velocity here of 50 kilometers per hour. Note that that would be a speed, except for the fact that we know that we're traveling northbound, right? If, so we can go ahead and rule this one out. And at this point, we would know that answer choice D is our answer, and we would go ahead and just select it and move on with life. But here we're doing some review, so let's go ahead and discuss a few other points. You see how the graph gets a lot steeper after that first 30 minutes? That is consistent with what would effectively be speeding up. So we're increasing our velocity. Velocity in this graph is simply the slope of the line. So because our slope gets steeper, that tells us that we're going faster. Then at this point, we'll call this like point two. We can see that our velocity not only decreases because the graph gets flatter, but it actually becomes negative. So what this tells us is that as time proceeds forward, we are decreasing our displacement, meaning that we probably turned around and that we're headed back toward the place where we started. We can see that in answer choices C and A, we have pretty much the same thing going on, only that in answer choice A, we had a we had less distance traveled despite the same displacement. So in answer choice A, we basically traveled the same trip that we took in answer choice C, but in answer choice C, maybe we took a more scenic route for one reason or another. All right, so let's go ahead and move on to answer choice D. Here in answer choice D, we can see that we've got another very different situation in which we have acceleration on the y-axis and again, time on the x-axis. At first glance, this looks like the simplest scenario so far. However, if we start thinking about what this graph would look like if we had displacement or velocity on the y-axis rather than acceleration, then we come up with a very different picture. So let's go ahead and draw out these two individual graphs here. This first one, we're gonna go ahead and put displacement on our y-axis, and in the second one, we're gonna have velocity on our y-axis. However, we're going to consider both scenarios as if we have the constant acceleration at 100 kilometers per hour squared that we do in this graph shown in answer choice D. So what do these displacement and velocity graphs look like in a scenario with constant acceleration? Well, just like velocity is the slope of the displacement versus time graph 
acceleration is going to be the slope of the velocity versus time graph. We can go ahead and draw out our velocity versus time graph as having a constant positive slope of 100 kilometers per hour squared. Now since our velocity is constantly increasing, that means that our displacement versus time graph cannot be linear. It has to be an exponential graph in which the slope constantly increases as x increases, so it's going to look just like this. Now we can use a few context clues to determine that our initial velocity is 0 kilometers per hour. First of all, the question stem indicates that we are talking about the first 30 minutes of our journey, meaning that we're probably going to start from standstill. I don't very frequently jump into a car while it's driving down the road, I'm not sure about you. So now that we have our constant acceleration, as well as our initial velocity and the time frame over which all of this is occurring, we're going to be able to figure out our final velocity, which will then enable us to determine the average velocity over this period of time, and then assess whether that is consistent with the scenario provided in the question stem or not. To calculate our final velocity, we're going to start out using this equation in which we have average acceleration equal to the change in velocity over the change in time. So we're going to use our 100 kilometers per hour squared as our average acceleration and set that at equal to delta v, which we need to calculate, divided by our 0.5 hours. And we're going to find a overall change in velocity of 50 kilometers per hour over this half hour. And since we know our initial velocity to be 0 kilometers per hour, then we're going to be able to go ahead and assume that our final velocity is just that 50 kilometers per hour. So since we're accelerating from 0 and we end up at the very end of this thing at a velocity of 50 kilometers per hour, that tells us that there's no possible way that our average velocity during that time frame could be 50 kilometers per hour, since that's the fastest that we ever go, and all we're doing is speeding up the entire time. And in fact, if we go ahead and do one more calculation, we can figure out that our average velocity during this time frame actually has to be 25 kilometers per hour, just because that's the mean over the course of that time. Regardless of whether you do calculate this average velocity, however, you can determine that answer choice D is for sure the correct answer because all we're looking for is something that's inconsistent with the scenario in which we travel at an average velocity of 50 kilometers per hour over the first half hour of a 40 kilometer journey. So we can go ahead and pick answer choice D with a high degree of confidence and move on to the next question to be covered in another video which you can find alongside more clear concise explanations to MCAT passages, questions, and challenging concepts by visiting any of our relevant social media pages or by checking us out on our website at www.onesourcemedicine.com. Thanks so much for watching.